Now presenting Channeling Eric's Hour of Enlightenment Hey there everyone, I love you all We have the wonderful Michelle Gray at Arts.com And we have my lovely son Eric Who I miss and love so much And today Oh, I, I love you Eric, I love you Michelle yeah, I love you, Lisa. And Eric says, love you, Mama. I love you oh, so much. I love you. All right, so have you ever been told you're an earth angel, but you feel stuck right now? So Eric's going to talk to us, to you especially, about that. And, um, you know, earth angels, there are not very many of them in the world, really. There's like 8,000 plus, you know, more or less. And they often feel like they just don't belong. And sometimes they feel stuck. And typical of an earth angel, and Eric, you can correct me if I'm wrong, they have had crap for lives. They've had a lot of trauma, a lot of loss, because they come in with a much higher vibration than the average bear. And so Mm -hmm. they can take a lot. But that doesn't mean it doesn't take a lot out of them. But, you know, it, um, it, it means they invite they put on their plate for incarnation a lot more than the average person does. Anyway, Eric, mm-hmm. I don't know what I'm talking about. You do. So go ahead. Take over. Take the mic. <laughs> Eric's like grabbing the mic. He's like, thanks, Mom. He goes, he goes um, it, you know, he wants to just say, first of all, he's like, Mom, he goes, we have talked about earth angels before, you know, why and what and how and all of that stuff. But he says the reason why, He's bringing this forward today as he says that there's people listening right now or who will be listening in the future that say that they've been told they're an earth angel. Yeah. Whether it's, you know, information that they read or in a reading or he says some that even just feel it, but they say to themselves, okay, um, all right, I don't feel like an earth angel. Like my life really stinks right now. And I feel really stuck. I'm told I have this big mission and I don't understand it. And he says, this is what he really wants to speak to today. Because he said that one of the the hardest things is, you know, we get mixed up, he says, sometimes with the label and what we're being told. And then we don't feel that we fit that or we're doing something wrong or there's something broken in us. And he says, and that's, that's, the furthest from the truth and he says and you got it mom he says earth angels do um they come into this earth they've come from a very high vibration and so even though that vibration is lower to come into the earthly realm they still have a higher vibration and he's like there's a reason for that and we'll get into that but he says it's, it's very common he says for um, he's calling them a celestial soul, mm-hmm. and he says celestial souls are are not. Um, sometimes they're terrestrial as well. Oh, so okay. earth angels. He says there's different types, there's different kinds, but he's going to speak to all of it. He's like he's going to speak to um, those that they have a little bit of uh, more of an ET. So he says we might be calling you star seeds and all of that, but he says. A lot of you that are listening right now, he goes, for the intent and purpose, we're going to call you the earth angel. But the celestial soul, soul, he says, you knew coming into this life, he says, you you were told. He goes, so imagine it. There's a big old table. He says, you're all sitting around with your team, with your guides. He says, everybody that's coming into this earth life with you to support you physically and non-physically, helping you incarnate into a family or a situation that most of the time needs balance. And he says, so it's an earth angels coming in as a role in humanity and Mm -hmm. coming through a family. And often he says a lineage that has had, say, a lot of um, hard situations. So whether it be addiction or abuse, or different things that they might be coming into to help balance out that energy. And he says well, so that? that's part of the um, – he says well, that families that families that say – like let's say there's generations of addiction. 
right. whether it's alcoholism or he says um, sometimes it can just be um, uh, what's the word, Eric? Uh, oh, property. It can be something like um, extreme poverty, uh, disease, yeah. different things that families have gone through that, through generations. And he says, and we understand why that happens. He says, belief systems, experiences that are carried forward from generation to generation, things that are carried in the DNA. And he says, well, so the earth DNA. angel. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. And he says, and mom, he goes, they come in like a warrior. They come in like I'm coming in to help. And he says, and there's a couple things that happen. He says they come in to balance that family. They come in to create balance oh. not only in the family, but sometimes they come in to create balance in a community. He says whether it be through a school system, it could be through a neighborhood. He goes, there's a lot of different ways that an earth angel can come in to create some sense of balance. Now, that doesn't mean, he says, that the earth angel themselves feels balanced. A lot yeah, of times he right. says they don't because yeah. he says they're coming in and he goes, you all listening to this. He goes, y'all know what I'm talking about. You come into a family or a situation or whether it be the school that you went to or however you grew up, he says you often came into a situation where you felt real different and it was, it was difficult. He says, why? Because you do have a higher vibrational feel. He goes, think of it as the blueprint of how you were made. You were created in a slightly different way. And he goes, and not because it's better, not because it's any of that, but because it's different, because you have a different purpose. And he says, so the thing is, is when you come here, that human experience takes over because yeah. – he goes, oh, and you have part of the deal here is you forget yeah, you have that. Spirit, you have spiritual amnesia too, of course. Exactly. And he says, so that's why, you know, the earth angel doesn't truly understand why they don't fit in, but they can often feel on a soul level, wait a minute here, like I'm not quite like everybody else. Yeah. Or why am I thinking things a little bit differently? Or why do I love so much? Or why do I have such a hard time understanding why – humans can treat others like this or treat animals like this. Yeah. So there's, there's a lot of these really deep, intense feelings, which again, he says that higher vibration, that intensity, he says also um, higher levels of empathy. He says an empathic, mm -hmm. uh, being empathic is on a spectrum because mm. we're all empathic to a degree, but he says the earth angels have this higher degree of empathy and this ability to be able to feel into subtle energies, often very is that psychic. Because he says, that, is that, for, is that mm -hmm. so that they can do the work they are committed to do this information? Yes. Okay. Yes. He says it's very important to have that ability because he says to be able to help. Um, and he says, and we'll get into a little bit about what that is, but he says um, those abilities are necessary, but he goes, remember, when you're coming into the world not understanding exactly who you are or why you feel the way you do or how it truly operates, those things like empathy and deep empathic ability can be a nuisance. It can be yeah. to your detriment pain in that depth. It can en encompass you. It can completely yeah. take you over. Yeah. So he says, you know, the experience can be very he heavy, but he first wants you to understand. He says, number one, you're here as an earth angel. Your number one mission is being here. And the vibration that you have come into this world oh. as, he says, is healing in itself. You are doing what you came here to do by existing. Oh, so, so you don't even need to and existing. So, so you don't mm -hmm. need to like, okay, I need to open up a homeless shelter or I need to... You just are there exactly. raising the exactly. vibration of the collective. Exactly. Well, that he sounds says, pretty easy. Earth Not. angels are spread around the world. He goes, and, and there is no mistake to the locations. He says, oh. if we think about the, the beauty of the Internet, and he says, Mom, look at our connection. Look at yeah. all those that we've connected with and how they're all over the world. Oh, they're so, lovely. We see yeah. how we've got all of these earth angels, but he says they're all over the place. He says 
that's meant to be purpose mm-hmm. for that. He says, if we were to draw out a big map, and he's actually saying we should do this, we should peg these earth angels like on a map to show where they're all located because he says we'd see a pattern yeah, and how it's, how it's designed. So that would be something really cool to do, Eric. He says, yeah, it would be. So he says that's something we should try. Um, so he says, yeah, you exist. You're living, you're breathing, you're here. He says, congratulations. You are doing the biggest thing ever. You are completing that number one call in your mission, which is being here. And on the soul level, that serves humanity because your vibration helps create balance in the world. Oh, and so why that is, well, he, he says there's a reason for that, too, because he said that um, because of that vibration, uh, it helps us. Um, what's the best way to say it, Eric? He says, think of it as when we have these higher vibrational individuals that are holding, he goes on a soul level, they're holding this vibration, and he goes, now, mind you, you could be walking around not feeling like you're holding that vibration, but your set vibration is of a level that's going to help balance and open up timelines that are available to humanity as a whole to help us walk into new timelines that are best suited for us. And he says that kind of leads us into the next point because he says, you know, a lot of us as earth angels are like, okay, but I feel drawn to do something. Or I feel like I should be doing something more. And I'm not doing enough. I feel stuck. I feel... Like, I I don't know where to go, or I might have too many ideas on my head and not knowing where to take action. So Uh he says, well, there's a lot of things as a human being, and and we talk about this a lot in our spiritual path that we can do, but he says, these are the things that are specific to your vibration as an earth angel that are going to help you not only feel good and give you more clarity, but they're also going to help attract to you experiences and uh, he says abundance in all kinds of different ways that are going to allow you to have a better life experience and help humanity at the same time. So he says, what's the number one thing that you can do? He says, well, you're programmed to awaken at a certain Mm. time. So Mm. he says, anyone listening to this has already gone through that or they're starting or they've just experienced that. So he says, as an earth angel, you may have had, and likely you have all known that you felt different, but you didn't have an awakening till a certain point in your life. Well, he mm. says, know that your blueprint, your soul blueprint was meant to awaken at a specific time. And it was meant to awaken to be able to help awaken others. Now, he says, when I'm telling you to help awaken others, I'm not telling you that you should be running around and tapping people over the head saying, wake up, wake up, wake up. Yeah, or yeah. telling them, you know, what they need to believe. He goes, no, 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 don't do that. He goes, by you being who you are and being awake and following your soul path. He goes, that vibrationally helps others wake up. He says, because on an energetic level, on a soul level, our energy reaches out like tentacles and touches the other ones, and he says, and and it helps open up ourselves energetically. He says there's a whole energetic unseen world that's going on around us that we don't see. So by you being who you are, he says you're helping others wake up. Open their eyes and heart. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And he says, what does that mean for you guys? He goes, what does that mean for your own personal fulfillment? How can you give to the community or how can you be part of something? He goes, well, there's one really simple yet, um, he says, very effective thing that you can do as an earth angel. And he says, and what this is, is it's spreading kindness, spreading compassion. Mm. And he says, and also practicing acceptance of others where they're at. And he says, those things are vibrationally aligned to every earth angel and when you do those things he says that is giving something to the world but he says don't forget to give that to yourself as well oh he goes, god and earth angels are notorious. 
Yeah, Earth Angels are notorious for not for putting everybody else first and not tending to their own emotional resources. That's exactly right. And he says, so, when, you, when you have lived a world of, of not experiencing compassion within yourself, yeah. he goes, that takes a lot of practice to start to build that yeah. and experience that for yourself and to accept yourself. Yeah, because, you know, a lot of earth angels probably have been beaten down by peers and parents and siblings because mm-hmm. they're so different, you know, and there's, oh, you're, mm-hmm. you're weird, I don't know. But, okay, so it mm-hmm. seems like the, the difference in vibrational frequency here an earth angel is high frequency and the collective is like <laughs> way low, that must be part of the pain there. See, it's feeling that yeah. different. Yes, because he says, um, when, when we're coming in from spirit form, he goes, generally coming in from our our higher soul or our higher being, he says, we are lowering our frequency to experience the physical reality because it is more of a dense frequency here. So yeah. he says when you have a, a celestial uh, blueprint to you, he says, you don't know why it feels so hard and painful, but he says it's like trying to squish like a, a basketball into a tiny little cup. So oh he God, says yeah. it, it is a much heavier experience. But he says the thing is, is there's ways that can work with ourselves to help expand our own vibration while we're here on Earth. And because we are naturally, he says, as being an Earth angel, you are naturally meant to be able to expand because you're here to help with humanity. So he says when you do things like um, one thing he's saying for an example is like volunteering. He says if you do something like volunteering and he goes, let's say this could be at an animal shelter. This could be at a homeless shelter. He says you could be volunteering at the school around the corner. He says you could be doing anything that you have an opportunity to feel called to that is giving that, that vibration of assistance being okay. of service. He says, when you have that, he goes, what that's actually doing is he says that that's allowing you to step into some kindness, some compassion, but he says on a uh, energetic level, what's happening is it's helping solidify the timeline of light. And oh. he says the timeline of light Love is you. we have wow. multiple timelines that are available to us. And he says, and remember you know, we've been coming from a place where it was heavier for a while. So some of those timelines are fading out and aren't yeah. as strong, but we still mm. have duality. And, you know, there's a lot of people in, uh, he says, different variations of vibration. So that's why the earth angels are so important right now, because they're helping solidify these light timelines. And so right. by being stepped into your purpose, he says, you may not be doing maybe what your personal purpose is right in this moment, but to allow you to be in that vibration that attracts that for you, that helps right. you expand and open up that light. He says, if you do anything that's connected to compassion, anything that's connected to service, to volunteering, then what you're doing is you're raising that light vibration. You're helping solidify that, which is helping humanity as a whole move into a higher dimension. All right, and, so... And he says in that... Yep. No, go ahead. I was just, he's just saying, and that will help lead you to the opportunities and the openings for your own personal experiences as well, wow. personal path. All right, so... An earth angel. Is that a soul mm-hmm. that has always been an earth angel? Or can I, can one be an earth angel some lifetimes and not the others? Yeah, he says he says that's right. Um, it's not really just one thing. And he says, um, just like the when he's talking about the celestial and the terrestrial, he says there there can be different variations. And he says, this particular lifetime that we're in right now, we're actually experiencing a multitude of, of, these, of these types of souls because this lifetime is concentrated in this transition that we've been having. 
he says, like, this is the big kahuna. This well, is, is the that, big one. Is this because we're, we are moving right now. Is this because we are sort of transforming from contrast consciousness to unity consciousness? And we need Earth Angels yes. to help us along with that? Yes. And and he says um, there there is a lot of assistance from um, – other species outside of earth as well. Um, He says there is a lot dependent on this transformation. And he says, it's also a very um, like consciousness is taking its greatest leap in this lifetime. So rather than this being a gradual expansion in consciousness, we're taking great big, like he says, if you think about running up a set of stairs, he goes, imagine this lifetime as, not going step by step, but skipping like three steps. He goes, you know, when oh. you're a kid and you try to see how many steps you can go up oh, yeah. without, he says, that's what we're doing is we're going up giant steps. Oh, awesome. I'd break a hip. All right. So what makes somebody say, I don't want to be an earth angel this incarnation. What, what, what's that all about? What makes them want to be it? He goes, well, it's, it's natural. It's oh, natural, or do, or and they, there's a, or do they have to be okay? You are allowed to be an earth angel, the, you know, the earth angel police or something like that. Well, he says that it's like a it's a vibration of this celestial energies that is meant to be able to help humanity at, on many different levels, um, but particularly this one is uh, volunteering to go in as human be- beings. It's like. Um, he says, think of it as the ground crew, the ground okay. crew. And so yeah. he goes, ah. these, particular, um, these particular human beings or celestial energies, he says, have a natural vibration to them to want to assist. Okay. And so being given the call, uh, which he says comes by a vibration, he's actually giving me like a buzzing in my body. He says, it's like feeling a vibration, like a call, like something I have to take care of. They know that it's the right thing for them to do because they also know what it leads to. They know how okay. important it is because of where it's heading. So how important it is not only for their own individual experience, which he says there is some of that too, of course. It's not necessarily only for the sake of the larger humanity, but they're also going to have a personal human experience, which is something that is, um, he says, we may not think so while we're here on earth all the time, but it's something that we're very drawn to, to come into earth and to really experience the adversity and the smells and the tastes and the the whole human experience, which is very different when we leave the physical plane. It's a very different type of experience. Right. So can an earth angel, like, never get on path and, okay, I wasted that earth angel opportunity? Does that ever happen? Or are they always going to be eventually drawn to their path? Earth angel experiences, just like all incarnations, are never a waste. Or are never, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it, there's always benefit to it. Well, that's true. It's there, like having a bi- higher vibration, as you said, helps the collective. Exactly. Okay, hey, that's good. Exactly. Phew. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so you have a struggling earth angel. Besides finding their path and getting fulfillment from that, how can they get over the pain that's so common with their trauma and losses? Um, Eric said what, what is most powerful, um, he says, you know, the earth angel is very connected to the subtle energies. So very connected into, um, any type of spiritual practice that helps them, um, engage in their sensitivity. Mm. So he says, you know, whether we call it daily prayer or meditation, he says it's using your own personal space to be able to, uh, he says, really disconnect from the experience Uh, and reconnect to yourself. Because he says, the more you are able to practice disconnecting from being actually in the experience, and he says, and we do this by using prayer, by using meditation, and he says, and, and by the consistency of doing this, we will have a, natural moving away from it to be able to observe it more because he says Ah. that's 
part of the ability as the earth angel that we're able to view things from kind of this um, way of observing so that we can help. And that's part of the ability. So he says, if you can get yourself into some sort of spiritual practice, and he says, and I mean, if that means it's riding your bike, if that means you're going for a run to start with, you're doing whatever you need to do, commit to it. Commit to it and use that time to be able to have time to disconnect from what you're in. He says the more that you do that, the more you'll start to feel a vibrational shift, like a rise when you do that activity. And so he says you'll continue to want to do that activity over and over again. And with the consistency of it, you'll start to create a pattern that raises your natural vibration. And when you do that, you get more clarity and that allows you to start receiving more spiritual help because he says, you know, the earth angels are the ground crew and you do have your direct connectors. And so you will have an easier time being able to connect into your spiritual helpers because you're here to be able to work in many different ways with humanity. So, you know, this starts to open up those pathways more to to have these connections. Interesting. Okay. Um, is there anything else you want to say, Eric, before we take callers? Uh, he just says um, he wants everybody to know that, you know, um, being, an, being an earth angel, he says, is, is an honor, a really special thing. And he says, you know, you don't always have to know exactly what you're here to do specifically and what exactly is my purpose because a lot of times there's many different things and a lot of times it it rotates too so you could start out kind of going in one direction and then move over to another and it's not because you're indecisive but but you're needed in different spaces so he says really the best thing that I can advise you is he says surrender to the need to control exactly what it is that you have to be doing and he says and and be more with yourself be more with the acceptance that you are who you are, that this is a real and true thing. And he says, and the more you can surrender to it, the easier it's going to be. He says, other than that, Mom, I just want to say I love everybody. I love you, too. He says, I'm really happy to be here. And he's rubbing his hands together. He says, let's take colors. All right. All right, so let's see. We're going to take somebody from the 501 area code. Hi there. How you doing? What's your name and how can we help you? Hello, Hi. ladies. This is the cobbler lady again. Cobbler, oh, oh. you're making me drool, man. <laughs> what can we do for you, Dina? I, uh, this is Donna Fraser. Oh, and Donna. I'm asking oh. if they're... Yes. There's another person oh. named Gina with your accent. Sorry. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> I know you got so many people to talk to. You can't remember everybody's names. But anyhow, I was wondering if there was a message for me. Okay, Donna, Eric says, he says, don't you worry about a thing. He says, you know, he just says that, that the worry of everything that's going on right now, the worrying doesn't change what the outcome is. He's telling you that everything's going to be okay. And and he's saying, um, so this is with your ex-husband? Uh-huh. Is it, your ex, is it with that? Because he just keeps saying, it's going to be okay. Um, the outcome is going to be okay. But he says, worrying about it or stressing about it, that's not going to change anything. No. But it is no. going to be I, okay. I, I'm just making myself happy right now. Excellent, that's, Donna. That's what you can do. Yeah, and I think what will really make you happy what would really make you happy is to invite me over for some cobbler. Yeah, I'll right. you. Well, as soon as I can, you got it. Okay, darling. All right, thanks for calling. Okay, also, thanks. darling, it was so nice and brief, and I want everybody to please remember to keep just, it's like one question, not like a million follow-ups, because we really have a lot of people that need to be heard. All right, got somebody from the 757 area code. Hi there, how you doing? Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Donnery from Virginia Beach. Great to be Hello. here. Hello. Um, 
Uh, I have a question. Uh, actually, I would like to have any messages from my father. When he passed away, I didn't have a chance to say goodbye to him. I just want to say that I love him. Okay. What did you, did you just say that you didn't have a chance to say goodbye to your father? Yes. And you wanted to let him know that you love him? Yes. Okay. Um I I got to tell you I'm I'm seeing a man here and he's showing himself as a younger man. Um and he has like a a little bit of a mustache and he's wearing a hat, like kind of like a a little bit like a fedora type of hat. Um, hmm. Very first thing he does is he, he's sending you some love, but he's also letting you know that you're never alone. He says you're never alone, and he says even though this universe is so big, you're never alone because he's always been with you. He's also talking about you having more support coming in as well, more assistance in your life. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. Very nice. Is, All right, thanks for calling. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. Thanks, Andre. All right, I uh, got somebody from the 267 area code. Hi there, how you doing? Hey, this is Jessica. Um, Hi, Jessica. I, hey, so I. I'm the one who has been homeless for two months, like bouncing around from like hotel to motel and stuff like yeah. that. And yeah. I, um, I, I think, or I thought I found an apartment, which I'm not happy about because I wanted a house. Um, yeah. and I was going to kind of settle for it, but like nonstop, this landlord is like driving me crazy. Uh-oh. So, I know that's not a good sign. I'm wondering, like, how much of this is my resistance? Um, and I don't really wow. know if I have any other options, and I'm really tired. I just want to move into a place already. But this is not yeah. a good situation. Listen to your intu- intuition. Mm. I know, but well, also my body is real tired. I know, he, darling. What Eric, what Eric what? is actually, he, he's actually, the first thing he's just saying to you is, he says, you know, um, he's talking about options, saying that, you know, sometimes when we um, go into a place to give ourselves a stepping stone, because he shows this as a stepping stone, and he says, you know, what it is that you really want, he says, is coming, but, and I don't know if they can give you like a, um, a shorter term lease or for a short period of time, because what he's saying is uh, allow yourself to take the break. Because he says, I know, but I'm having a struggle even getting into the place. Like, the guy's just difficult to communicate with. Oh, he's difficult with you. Okay. Mm. Let's see what else he says. Eric shows him as as becoming more accommodating, or it being, because he just says, you know, um, part of it, there is a little bit of an energetic, like, sometimes when. There's some uncertainty in you, um, and he says there's a little bit of uncertainty. And he says, and is this guy completely easy? No, but he also says that this is meant to come together. So he says, you know, to to be persistent with it. Um, <laughs> I'm not quite sure what it is he's asking for, but Eric says there's going to be a, a deal because he says you have some, and Eric's calling it angelic assistance. Oh, this good. Go through because Eric, you're help, moving help into her. a place. Help her, darling. All right, thank you. Thank you. For so calling thank, you. Oh. thank you. Everybody pray for Jessica, please. Oh, my goodness. All right, got somebody yeah, from the... She'll get into a place. I hope so. Got somebody from the 919 area code. Hi there. How you doing? I'm great for taking the call. My name is Kay. Hi, Kay. Where are you calling from? I, I call, I'm calling from Georgia. Hey, Georgia, beautiful state. Hey. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Hot right now, but yes, beautiful. <laughs> oh, God, it's like 99 here right now, so it's awful. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. Gotcha. So how can we help you, darling? Um, I'm just, the question is regarding career. I've had a couple of um, headhunters reach out to me about different jobs. 
Well, actually, more than a couple, but several. But um, it's like nothing is panning out just yet. And um, there are two right now that's on the table, and I'm just wondering, do you see something from my great aunt high school coming through some? Did you say that you have two? Did you say you have two offers? No, 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 two heads. No, no, multiple headhunters, right? Headhunters. Yes, yes. Right, right. Okay, because what Eric shows me is um, you having an option, but he keeps saying the word acceptance, like Mm. you taking taking a job, like acceptance. Um, What do you mean? Okay. Or someone's going to accept her, or she needs to be accepting of whatever job comes her way. No, if, oh, if somebody's like going to accept you, but what what, what Eric says is, um, look at what's available to you and make a decision on what you want, because he says there's a little bit of back and forth energy. Mm-hmm. So energetically, mm-hmm. it's yes. like you're you're kind of going back and forth, and he says so. It's not making it real clear because he says, remember what you're attracting in. There's like a it comes from your subconscious. So he says, get real clear on what it is that you want. And he says, acceptance is guaranteed. So just be real clear okay. on the one that you want. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, there is one that I really, really want. I just hadn't heard back from him. So that, that, um, well, imagine that you energy towards it. Imagine, okay. you, yeah, you, got imagine it. you have it. Imagine, you know, them showing your desk and putting your name on the door. Imagine, feel it, feel the joy. The excitement you get from that call, everything. Law of attraction, man. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. You Thank have, you so hey, much. Hey, I'll just tell you, your your energy mm-hmm. is real powerful right now. So this is the mm-hmm. time to do that because you are ready for this. Ooh, Wonderful. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Blessings well, to you both. You're welcome. You're so welcome. <laughs> oh, she's going to get it. I just know it. Okay, we got somebody from the 586 area code. Hi there. This is me, sweet bird. Hi, Lambert. How you doing? How are you? I just the first Lambert. thing I want to say is is that you are not given your due. You are the most selfless angelic person on the planet. You give oh. volumes of love to everybody with well, no it. expectations. Oh, you, they well, it. No, you I deserve do. it. I do expect it. I do expect it. You know, I and I wanted to. I expect the feeling of satisfaction in giving somebody love. I love it. You know, you have no idea how wonderful your your presence is. You really don't. Mm-hmm. My questions are going to be like yes, no, real quick. Okay. Mm-hmm. Because I don't want to tie up the channel. Um, uh, Eric, is my spiritual contract uh, irrevocable? For his medical issues. Yeah, especially neurological ones. Yes. Okay, there that that's irrevocable then. Yes. Okay, did I really talk to you and Metatron and the Archangels? <laughs> yes. He answered that before you could even finish. Yes. Did that, did you talk through me? Yes. In that one sentence, did God talk to me? Yes. And so did Metatron. And, I, and so did Metatron. And Mother Mary's yeah. still with me. She's with you quite often, he says. And God said he has plans for me, but he didn't divulge it at the time. And I guess I, I made a friend of everybody. Uh, it is my West Coast friend, is she is she doing okay? I'm worried about her. Lori. But Eric says yep. Eric says she's doing okay. Um she's feeling kind of alone right now. Okay. Or is she alone? Cuz he he said there's a little bit of loneliness there. Um Eric says like um support. Like there's some spiritual support that's been sent her way. Did you did you pray for for something for her? Or oh, pray for help for her? Constantly. Constantly. Okay. And I'm worried about her. Okay. Because he says, like, prayers have been heard. He says support is there. Well, Will I ever talk to – I'm sorry. Why does she she cut off communication? Anything specific? (sighs) 
Uh, no, Eric's not really being specific about it other than she's there's some kind of change that she's gone through. Okay. okay. So I may never talk to her again then, right? Yeah, he said he said like um sometimes our plans with each other it like takes its it it runs its course. And he said that's that, what's happened here. That, okay. That's okay. Fan, but I, you've been so good, Eric, my brother, my venerable you know, you need to be treated. You are an archangel now. You need to be treated with veneration and with reverence. And um, oh. and I love you very much. He says he loves yeah. you too. Thank and, you, Michael, um, for calling in. I, I thank you, my my sweet Thanks, sweet Robert. bird. I love you. Bye bye. <laughs> I love you too. Bye bye. Oh, sweet. He's so adorable. I love him. All right, he so really I have somebody from the 937 area code. Hi there, how you doing? Hi, this is Kathy Prince from Ohio. Oh, hi, how are you? Hi, hi Kathy. Hi, I actually, um, I plan on getting the full mediumship this September, and okay. I just wanted to know if that's a good time. Oh, the Atlanta Scaler full mediumship? Oh, yeah, right. And I wanted mm-hmm. to know if that was a good time, or should I wait? Well, Eric says that that's just fine for you. Um, he says um, really any time. Um, so he's saying August, September, October, all really good times for you. All right, so okay, um, thank you. Personally, personally, I recommend that people only get this if they plan on using it. Uh, I mean, you know, for a career or whatever. I might be wrong, but I always really recommend that, not spending the money unless you're really going to put it to use. So I just want to... Oh, yes, I am I definitely want to. I've been practicing and trying. I've been doing automatic mm-hmm. writing, and Ooh, um, yeah. I want to, you know, I've been talking to Eric, actually, um, with yeah, the, yeah. Um, Eric, the are rod. You, are, you her? are you helping her hone her um, skills? He is, Eric? and he's actually saying... Um, Eric suggested that she get this done. So you probably already know this, but he he suggested to you, like has poked you to get this done. And he says that he's working with you. So Eric Ooh. is one of your guys. Oh, um, nice. He said that, um, ooh, so we might be hearing from you sometime soon, sometime down the road, because he's like bringing you bringing you around. To use your abilities. <laughs> Is the CE fold of medium? Of yeah, medium? yeah. Ooh. He says she's she's gonna be she's gonna be popping around the corner one of these days. I, I've Nothing. been actually dreaming about it and um, talking yeah. to Eric a lot about it, and it's been um, it's been really exciting. Yeah, he he showed fun. me because he said he showed me, uh, and I'll just tell you real quick. Um, when he told me what I was going to be doing and that, and he just gave me that same thing and wanted to share that with you to just say that, that that's true, like that that's happening. So yeah. that's cool. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you so much. Awesome. You're welcome. Oh, Eric, you're wonderful. Okay. We've got somebody from the two, cool. Hang on. 209 area code. Hi there. How you doing? Good. How are Good. Hello. Hi, who Hi. is this? How can I help you? Um, this is Stacy from California. Hi, Stacy. Hi, Stacy. Hi. I was going to ask about my work, um, but I want to know. I've been told I was an Earth Angel, so want to go there? That would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, yes, you are an Earth Angel, most definitely. Um, Eric says that, you know, you have fit the, um, he says everything that we're talking about today, particularly challenges, he says, um, as you grew up, and he also says with relationships, um, like uh, different, different types of relationships with people. Um, he says that that has been one of your biggest challenges in this life. And he also said that, um, you're taking steps right now that is moving you closer to what your life purpose is. But he also says, you know, you question 
some of the situations that you go in or how it changes or why did that happen. And he says that part of your purpose as an earth angel is you do get moved around into different situations as well as with different relationships. So he says, don't think that it's something going on with you. It's actually your vibration and where you're needed. So that's often Whoa. why things will open and close and you'll get moved around. I, I have the weirdest situation, you know, like I'll befriend someone and then he almost uh-huh. dies and I get into the hospital in time and it's uh-huh. and then I never talk to him again. It's so bizarre. Yeah, mm. yeah. Like that's what that's what Eric's showing me. It's like these like it just these time and place and there it is and then it's gone. And yeah. but he says that's that's your work, that's what you're doing and he says so know that that's understood that that's challenging that is hard mm-hmm. and but he mm-hmm. says you know um it's not all going to be because he says that you're taking steps into some changes where you're going to have a little more closeness in relationship and in, in this part of your life nice. so um he says it's not always going to be like that no that's good okay darling thanks for calling thank you bye you thank bet. you Okay, we have somebody from the 412 area code. Hi there, how you doing? Hi, um, Vaughn, well, this is Lori from Presto, and I'd like to hi, say Lori. the show was really, hi, really interesting about the Earth Angels. I enjoyed it. And um, mm-hmm. I, I've called in before. My son, yes. Jacob, uh, tomorrow will be two months since he passed away oh, from leukemia, yeah. and and um, the holiday was really hard, and seeing his yeah. friends get together, and he, he's not here anymore. And uh, anyway, so I'm, so I'm calling um, to see if he has a message for me. Um, well, the first thing he says is, um, and, and I mean, I, I've felt him before, so this is not the first time I've felt him. And he comes yeah. through, and he just wants to let you know that he's happy. Um, okay. He wants he wants to let you know that he loves you. He knows absolutely yeah. what this last four days has been for you in particular. Um, yeah. He says he says, Mom. He goes, you know, as hard as it is. He says, I know, and, and he wants you to know that there's nothing in this world that can grow or can change or evolve without without movement, without change, like meaning all things change. Nothing ever right. stays the same. Um, okay. So, so much. Um, there's a lot of purpose that he's bringing forward in saying that, you know, take this time right now to feel close to him. Because he said that okay. you talk to him all the time. Because yeah. he said, like, he says, my mom can talk. My mom can talk, and even when he's oh. not talking, he's still talking. He's, oh. like, telling me that you talk. Because he says, I hear her talk all the time. He says, Mom, are you going to sleep? Are you going to sleep? Are you going to get some yeah. rest? Because he says that, yeah. you know, you're not maybe sleeping as well as you could. He no. says, every now and again, it's just like you crash. But he says yeah. he's a little concerned uh-huh. about your sleep. Can, can um, you, I just... Can you share about your death? Was it, did you, in the transition, was it painless? Uh, or can you give your mom some closure on that? Mm. Talk about your transition, I guess. You know, the very first thing he gives me is he says that um, his body went into a sense of peace while he was still physically there. Mm. So he's giving yeah. me that, like, going into a state that, it was like he still had a sense of awareness, but he couldn't communicate it. Yeah. He wasn't able to express, but he could still hear. Um, and he says that it was like going into a dream and yeah. waking back up, like waking back up in a dream. He says um, the difference was is that he had no discomfort, and he said oh, he had a lot of energy, a lot of energy yeah. because – he shows himself being around his body, not in the body. And he's yes. showing you, he's like, look, mom, look, look, look at my shoulders. Look at how I'm breathing in and out. I'm in and out, in and out. He's like, look, mom, look, look, look. 
And he's like, I'm yeah. strong. He keeps showing, I'm strong, I'm strong. Um, he he says so he can hear a lot of voices. Very strong. He, um, um, no fear. Just no fear. Oh. <laughs> okay. I have one more question. I know there's a lot. Of, and this seems okay. silly. But he always loved food. He loved to eat. Is that still something that he can experience there, or is that all gone? I mean, he loved yeah, to he eat. Says, he, <laughs> he says that if he wants to make himself a hoagie sandwich, he can yeah. experience. Like, he's showing a great That's big, true. like, it's like a, a sub, like a <laughs> great big yes. honking uh-huh. sub that's got everything on it. And he says yeah. he can still experience it. He doesn't have the same tactile experience like the right. swallowing and the, the you know going right. into the stomach that type of thing but he can uh he says he doesn't have to if if he wants to mimic that it's like he can yeah. but he says he can still tune into like the smell now i'm going to tell you something else though he can still smell your food because oh, wow. he says uh, don't think that what, cause he's like, you're making food and even thinking how he would like that or like that's yeah. his favorite because he's like, yeah. still is. Well, I think about still making his favorites. I don't really want to cook lately cause I just feel bad. I know. But, yeah. Um, you, you okay. will again though. You will again. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. It. All right. Laura, you're just tell Take care. Oh, my goodness, I cut her off, she said. But, yeah, Lori, he hears your every thought, sweetie. He does. He sure does. Of course. Okay, got somebody from the 505 area code. Hi there, how you doing? Hi, Eliza. I'm doing hey. a little better. How are you it's feeling? Danny. Yeah, hi, Danny. I'm still pretty sad today, felt very heavy. Um, okay. So I just wanted to know if Colbert had anything he Colbert. wanted to say. Now, when did he pass? Colbert uh, passed? April. April, okay. Um, okay. Okay. Well. So, Colbert, do you have anything to say? And, co- and who is Colbert to you? My husband. <laughs> Your husband, okay. Yes. Well, I got to tell you, the very first thing he comes through, because as I'm right, just breathing him in here, pulling him in, he comes right straight through the heart, just like a speeding train. And he says, mm. I love you. I love you. He's right directly at you, standing right in front of you right now. Um, <clears throat> he says that he's given you all kinds of little signs throughout the day. Um, yeah. He's showing the clock. Like, um, cause he says that you keep looking at the clock or you're looking at certain <laughs> times on the clock because he's saying when you look at the clock and that time comes up, he says he's right there with you. So are you oh. seeing the same time on the clock or is there something about your clock? <laughs> Sometimes. And usually at night I wake up around the same time and I can't go back to sleep. Mm-hmm. He's, um... And know that, because what he's showing me is being right by you and speaking to you. And right at that time, um, it's going to be so uh, an experience for you to be able to feel him. Because ask him to touch you because he touches your face, right at the side of your face, and he'll touch your shoulder. And and you feel that, don't you? Do you feel him touching you? (laughs) Yeah. It's real subtle. It's real subtle, but yeah. he's reaching his hand out and he touches you, and it's almost like um, almost like eyelashes, like little tickles. Oh, is what you'll feel. So <laughs> when you wake up, because you will tonight, he says you will. And when you wake up tonight, he says to ask him, and he'll do it again. If you miss it, he'll do it again, because he's showing you that he's still there, and he's helping yeah. you mm-hmm. through this time. But he, I don't know if he said I love you, dear. That's how he said it, but he's saying, I love you, dear. I love you dearly. Okay. Yeah. It gets better. 
Yeah. Danny, it, it was better, I promise. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's been pretty hard. <laughs> Oh, yeah, but he's he's with Eric. Eric's helping too. Oh, that's yeah. good. Thank you, Eric. Yeah. Does he have anything to say to the kids? <laughs> he just he's so full of love. I got to tell you, I keep asking him for something real specific, but I got to tell you, it's. Love is his number one thing. It's how much oh. he loves you guys, how much he loves the kids. Um, I'm just asking if he can give give me something specific for them. We um, just had our the, the television. Uh-huh. He's giving them something on the television. Something's coming on the television. That that remind mm-hmm. that had something to do with him or something that he said. Tell them to watch for the television. All right. Is that he might be playing with the television? But he does come through with a lot of love. That's awesome. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you for calling in. Thank you, Danny, okay. and thank you all. I think we'll end on that note of love. Mm-hmm. To all you earth angels and others, thank you for tuning into this show. Your love is so important to me, and I appreciate you. And please, again, check out Michelle at uh, Michelle Gray at thehealingh-art.com. And um, Eric, Michelle, I love you. I love you, everyone. Love you, too. Eric says, I love you, Mama. And Eric says, I love all you earth angels out there. Mwah. No, I love you. You, kid. you love everyone. <laughs> I love you. Bye-bye. I sure do. Bye. Yeah.